we heard a lot of talk about the defensive line guys you've added. I guess it's you know, a week almost in the camp and what you've seen from just that group overall being a little bit bigger, a little more experienced, especially for the old. It, it, it feels really good to have experience in the room. You know, you got a guy like Jalen Sammy coming off the wire. It brings a lot of a wealth of knowledge to, the, to our room and whatnot. And our guys are following him. Um, he blends right, right in with the group, and his learning curve is unbelievable. He came right in. He learned it, learned it just as fast or faster than some of the guys in the room, which is outstanding. And um, not only that, he's a team player. But um, adding that depth to our room and adding that girth to that body, I mean, that, that kind of speaks for itself. We just got to continue to have that depth because one of the things that they talked about coming in last year and I remember um, Simeon Barrow talking about it. He wasn't able to learn to let himself go because he had to play so many plays. He had to kind of pace himself because he knew that that was all he had. Now we're at a point where we got some depth. Guys can play freely and, and take off and play hard and play and run now. So. How much has that room changed uh, from a talent perspective from the end of the year when you guys wrapped up spring ball to now where you bring in all the other guys, the, the young freshmen that you were kind of waiting on, Jalen? I mean, from a talent perspective, how much has that change and added to the practice? It's added a lot to it, especially at the end position. We have a lot of defensive ends. Um, the problem now is just trying to get everybody reps. There's not a lot of whole, you know, whole lot of reps to, to go around. So right now, you know, if, if you've been watching the way the practice has been going, there's no starting group at all. Um, I've been, we've been mixing and matching. We let a different group try it out there every day. You know, it might change one or two pieces. Um, everybody's on the edge right now. So everybody's fighting for a role and everybody's fighting for, for, for playing time. And we want to keep it that way. And we're going to be that way all the way up to game week. And Try to keep everybody on the edge. Um, we're going to see who the best are, and then we're going to see who's available. That's where it's going to be. The psychology of culture from the last place you've been, coaching at the highest level, and then coming here and being part of this Michigan State football culture. Do you blend those together? Do you take pieces? Or how does that work out? I think wherever you go, football is football. You do you blend all that together. And, it, and, and the psychology of each room is just kind of predicated on the guys in the room, you know, bringing in Bringing in veteran guys, um, they kind of bring their own deal. You kind of sit back and you kind of watch who's going to be the alpha dogs. The great thing is I got a bunch of alpha dogs and most of them on the inside. You know, I got a couple on the edge. But we got such young pups on the edge, they got to follow a little bit right now before they learn how to lead. But you, you kind of let the culture take its path and kind of steer it the way you want it to go. But you let the leaders lead and you give, give, give the guys that need to have the mic a chance to have it. Number, yeah. I'm trying to go as deep as I can go. So if we can get three, four deep, and if somebody has a special trait where they can come in and rush for me on third down, and that's all he does as a freshman, we'll do that. But we're, we're, we're going to try to go as deep as we can go because we want to be fresh and want to be running. If you look out there and your guy's not running, you throw the guys to tap me on the hill because we'll get them out and put the next guy in because we want everybody playing wide open and, and at the highest level. By Joe's one of the puffs on the edge. <laughs> yeah. What have you liked out of him so far in this short little snippet of ball game? Um, the guy's athletic beyond belief. Um, just his get off, you know, um, his approach to the game, you know, he's, he's working hard to, to, to study the game. It's just so different for him, you know, him being from a foreign land and playing football, you know, only a couple of years, it's just so different for him. Um, he's still learning the game, but his athletic tools are, are, are really unmatched. Um, once we're able to blend, both of those deals together, we're going to have something special. Which players impressed you the most from a leadership standpoint? I, dude, I can just, you can just throw out all of them. I mean, you, you got Jalen that, that jumped in. You got D-Harm that's, that's been a leader from the start, even though he's a silent leader, you know, in the spring, not being out there. Um, you got Simeon, of course. You know, you got, <laughs> you got Maverick. I mean, all those guys talk. You got, you know, um, Chris. Um, all those guys that come up and talk and have the mic at a different time. And I think every one of them brings something special to the table that they can add to the group. And I think they kind of command respect in that room, which is great. What's sort of your expectations for Simeon? Like, the guys play a lot. They could be on the defense, you know, sort of doing, taking things to another level. What's sort of your expectations for him? Why do you sort of challenge him? Like, what those, those conversations with him, you know? Most of the conversations with him being just let go. Just let go. You ain't got to carry it all. 
You know, we got enough guys, there's enough guys around you to take some of that. So when you see something, and because Sim knows ball, when you see something, take it. I'm, I'm trying to give them, as, I'm trying to give Simeon, especially guys like that that have been around, as many tools as I can to let them drive the car. All right? For them to be coming off the field telling me, hey, coach, this is what I saw. Can I try this? Remember we talked about this before. I want, I want to have those kind of conversations on the sideline for, for them to be in control of the game. Everything set around stopping the run. Oh, um, everything talking about, you know, we talked a lot about being able to recognize blocks, you know, um, first, you know, teaching guys, you know, the basics of the games so they can actually come to the sideline and have those conversations. Um, teaching guys, you know, proper footwork, teaching guys how to be explosive and come out of their hips and stay square and build on the wall at the line of scrimmage. Those are the things that we want to accomplish, and those are the key things that we work on our individual drills. Hopefully, it's showing up on tape. We know your focus is here, but you were at Stanford a long time. How shocked were you by what happened, and what do you make of this pack four, maybe Stanford and Cal going to the ACC? Yeah, I mean, I think everybody's kind of saw it coming. But, um, you know, kind of, you know, I got mixed emotions about it, but um, got a lot of great people out there. I got some people that work in the Pac-12 that are, that are you know, really close friend of mine. So I, I hate to see that for them. But um, as this thing is a free market now with NIL and everything else, it's changing everybody's mindset in every game. But um, anybody that wants to come to the back 10, to, to the Big Ten, come on. So taking all takers, we'll play them all. Uh, what I like right now is, I mean, this, this is part of camp, and it's probably even more, more so next week. I like the chipperness of the guys. I like how chippy they're getting. You know, guys are getting up in each other's face, challenging them in a good way, which is good. You know, um, trying to be competitive, not combative. But we want to continue to stay on edge and have that competitiveness between one another and get each other to the fight. That, that young man is really learning the game right now. He's, he's learning all the pieces and stuff are starting to come together, and he's able to see things fast, and he's playing more freely. Um, Zion is a great talent. I mean, he's a long, long guy that can play on the inside and outside. So you'll see him on the edge on first and second down, and you might see him inside on some interior pa pass rush. So um, his pass rush is getting a whole lot better. He's, you know, as long as he is, he's really slippery. But um, he's starting to see things, and he's starting to ask great questions, and he's just learning, becoming a student of the game. You came back a place where you know, they just had a tumultuous situation going on out of Stanford in terms of where the leagues are going to be. And I wonder how you feel for those, for those guys. Um, the players? Yeah, the players, the staff, everything, the school. The long, I'm, I'm saying, like, as long as they're playing football, I guess they're going to be all right. You know, if they get a chance to tee it up and line up against somebody, they'll, they'll, they'll be just fine, you know. When you went back and watched last year's team and you watched the defensive line on tape, were there points where you had to kind of wonder, who's this guy, why is this guy here, based upon the personnel issues that, that there were with guys out being dinged up or suspended and everything else that was going on? Yeah, I mean, that was my first question. But once I found out everybody was hurt, I mean, it's kind of a free fall at that point. You know, you play whoever's standing. So it was some of that going on. It was some of that going on with us in the spring, you know, with a couple of guys nicked up and whatnot. But, you know, at the end of the day, we're going we're gonna to line up and we're going to play the best that we got and put them out there on the, on the field. As you watch that, I mean, what were your thoughts on how Scotty handled that situation from a personal standpoint? Oh, I thought it was great the way he handled it. I mean, you know, he, every now and then when you, when you don't have the bodies to sit there and just play base defense, you got to blitz. You got to do some things that's, you know, kind of out of pocket just to make some negative plays happen. And that's exactly what you got to do as a coordinator sometimes. Did you go back and watch film on Chris Bowles early in the year? Did you come along to the game? I did. I mean, he's, he's getting really close back to game form. And like I said, Chris is one of those vets in the room, you know, that, that has a voice. And um, you want him on the field. You want a guy on the field like that because he just understands football. You know, um, you know, really good at recognizing blocks. Uh, really, really tough competitor, um, taking on blocks, you know, playing against the tight end. 
I'm, I think he's getting right back to, to season form. We're trying to be smart with him right now, just you know, wrapping him up. When you don't play football for that long, you just got to be smart with you guys to get them where they need to be. Good. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.